Bueno, buenos días para todos. Vamos a comenzar con esta segunda sesión de la, del curso de nanotecnología para administración de fármacos de medicamentos herbales. Eh, esperemos que si no nos escuchan o pasa algún inconveniente, por favor nos avisan quienes están en la, en la videollamada. Good morning, profesor Patak. Thank you very much. We are very happy to be here to start your second lecture, and um, we hope to enjoy as much as yesterday, or even Surely. more, much, much more. <laughs> okay, let me check once again. So, uh, buenos días. Uh, amo Colombia, vi la gente de Aqua aquí. Mi nombre es Yashon Patak. Actualmente estoy en USA. Uh, this is the disclaimer. You know, I am using many different figures in my presentations and those are used exclusively for explaining the ideas and the concepts. So, and I am going to share all my presentations, all the 12 presentations with all the students and faculty who are interested in and the PowerPoint presentations will be with Professor Caesar. And uh, I am looking forward to uh, talking to you uh, so this I already said, so soy profesor y decano asociado, I am professor and associate dean en la Universidad del Sur de Florida, Taneja College of Pharmacy, estoy en Colombia como becario, Fulbright <coughs> specialist, sincere thank to Universidad Distrial Francisco Jose de Caldas for hosting me at Fulbright Specialist here at Bogota. My sincere thanks to Rector and Dean, she is here today, and other administrative head supporting my trip here. My sincere thanks to Fulbright Specialist Com Commission of Colombia for supporting my trip to Bogota, Colombia. I will fail if I do not mention my sincere gratitude to Professor Cesar Aurelio Hereno, Fiero, one of the very smart and very nice person, being my host and incredible support for making my stay happy here and he takes care of me very well. He is a wonderful person I met here in Colombia. Uh, special. To mention that today you have also a very nice ability. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. So today I have a different um, shirt which is from Indonesian. Um, batik, they call it. I stay in the Batik Hotel here. This is known as Indonesian Batik. And in Indonesia, I must share with you that every town, big town, they have different designs. They don't copy. They develop the design. Like one town will have shells. So they will have all shells, different types of shells. So each town, each city or island will have different colors and different uh, Batik, you should go to Indonesia, very beautiful place and beautiful people like Colombia. <laughs> so, uh, special thanks to Sergio Vilamil Sanchez, Sebastian Vilamizar and many others from Colombian Fulbright Commission for their kind support. Uh, Professor Luis H. Reyes, Juan C. Cruz, Professor Willy Moreno, Professor Luis Fernando Cruz Quiroga, they are all my friends from Colombia and they, I have been communicating with them and interestingly I am editing a book with Professor Luis H. Reyes and Joan Cruz. They are in other university, correct? I might yes, be going to yeah. Special thank to Professor Alexis Ortiz from the International Office UDFJDC and Alvaro Vasquez. Uh, and encourage me to apply for this Fulbright Specialist Fellowship from Colombia. Encouragement of all is so supportive and the outcome is I am here. The outcome. 
my apologies for my spanish pronunciation if you understand my spanish then surely you will understand my english too miss this kulpas pour me as panol and yesterday i was walking on the road and i saw this this kulpas at many places construction was going on and they said this kulpas yeah they they put this kulpas you know <laughs> it was very interesting to see that so i just uh, what i would like to share with you is that today is my second lecture which i am going to talk about application of nanotechnology and some of my research work which we did in the delivery of herbal drugs but then tomorrow i am going to talk about standardization of the herbal medicines how they should be done and their quality control and then i am going to talk about advances in the treatment of infectious diseases with special focus on advancement in anti malarial drug delivery system using nanotechnology because malaria is also existing in colombia correct yes. and that's why i thought it will be a good idea to know how nanotechnology is applied in the drug delivery system then i am talking about changing face of healthcare how the technology is changing the face of healthcare sorry about that my apologies this school pass <laughs> so then i am talking about and i am going to give you some intra 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 information about how the artificial intelligence is going to change the healthcare a day is there that we will see so many changes happening in coming 5 years maximum 10 years but it is going to change the whole picture of healthcare and we'll discuss that about it and then i am going to talk about precision medicine how a day will come that we will have individual person will have individual medicine because now what we do one tablet all people somebody is 6 feet tall somebody is 5 feet tall like me and same amount of drug that doesn't work it has to go gradually to personalized medicine based on their height weight their race if they are colombian or american or indian or asian they will need different amount of drugs to get the same effect and that is what precision medicine is coming up with and it is more useful in cancer so you will learn it more in cancer because in cancer even the little extra dose will kill the patient and that is where the challenge is and we'll discuss that there and then there is uh, interesting thing is as we were talking yesterday it is very difficult to for the human society to do what to do with the old people the geriatric population yes. they are living longer and longer and longer they don't die so that's a problem <laughs> and it is a big public health problem <laughs> so we need to address that so yesterday i was telling the students here that this is the area where you will have a lot of opportunities because there will be millions of old people they need help and if you can create some companies which can help them that will be working out very well in america now they are growing companies for food delivery for nursing for you know taking them to the grocery stores there are different companies and they make money because old people have money correct young people no money old people have money <laughs> and then i i work in the area of uh, ophthalmic drug delivery so we have created injection which can be given inside the eye for the posterior eye treatment like macular degeneration or glaucoma and these things so i will talk about what we have done i have several patents in that area so you will be able to see some uh, good work what my lab does uh, and we do in the in that area and then uh, i am going to talk very interesting talk this is very important because in covid we all have suffered in lo a lot in united states there is a major problem of mental health mm -hmm. because of the covid and one of the reason was they never had a closure you know the grandmother died in new york but they never could see the body of the grandmother and that was creating lot of major problem for them the student so i am talking about it is the end of the beginning or beginning of the end end of the beginning or beginning of the end mental health of college student and then i am talking about nano based value care solution for oncology practices how the oncology practices are changing 
because of the nanotechnology applications in the cancer treatment and focus on herbal and nutraceutical. And my last talk is on nutraceutical nano emulsions to deliver antioxidant for neurodegenerative diseases. That is another interesting area where you are using herbs, natural products, using nanotechnology to for neurodegenerative diseases. And my last uh, meeting is on uh, 17th because 18th I am leaving. Yeah, yeah. So all of you are welcome for the meeting. Yeah, this is a forum. Okay, forum. Yeah, open forum. So that will be great. So I will start with my talk now. So yesterday I had showed this uh, picture to all of you that in the recent 20 years the changes are happening a lot and uh, people who were thinking that herbal drugs and nutraceuticals are not good for the humanity, now they are taking the humanity inside them. You know, the picture shows the crocodile eating the woman. That means the humanity is getting into the nutraceuticals. Everybody is looking at it and you will find hundreds of books there. I personally have 25 plus books in that area, uh, nutraceuticals. And oh, I can use that. Good. Oh, perfect. Yeah. I will do that. Yeah. Thank you. Gracias. So here, the, here is the picture where, you know, the crocodile is eating. This crocodile is nothing but the nutraceuticals or consumer getting into the, uh, going inside because they are so much of, now the number of dollars which are spent on pharmaceutical and number of dollars on nutraceuticals, they are almost like coming closer now, day by day. And it is a very interesting thing which is happening there. So let us look at what are the herbal medicine, gen general overview to understand what it is. Herbs are generally defined as any form of plant or plant product including leaves, stem, flowers, roots and seeds. And you can eat those, you can take those as medicine. Some of the herbs have high concentration of drugs into the leaves or in flowers or in fruits. Depends on what kind of plant you are looking at. And they have been used since ages and they are used as food supplement or ingredient. Uh, I don't know, have you ever gone to Indian uh, uh, restaurant? Have you tasted Indian restaurant? Right. We use at least five to six herbs in our curry. So we use coriander, we use turmeric, we use black pepper, we use uh, fenugreek, and then you will have many different things to provide the sour taste to the uh, tamarind, very common. And all these things Nowadays people have started saying that, oh, turmeric, antioxidant, turmeric, anti-inflammatory, tamarind, anti-inflammatory. So now the same thing what we are eating every day have now new application. They are saying this is new. But it has been used by all of us for many years and it is going on very well. Coriander is one of the best uh, spice which is used to give the taste. Even in hotel boutique where I eat my dinner every day and lunch, they put coriander on the top of it. Very nice taste it gives. So the herbal drugs are, they have been used since ages and herbal medicine involves part plants or plants of, part of the plants and you can isolate the tree and nowadays a lot of companies, many many companies are putting a lot of efforts on isolating the polar side or a non-polar side. And if you take polar ingredients and non-polar ingredients, you can have different type of concentration. And it is a, uh, there is a company I had visited in uh, Indonesia. Uh, the company's name is DEXA. And it is a $500 million company. And they do huge extractions using different types of polar, non-polar solvent and trying to find out what will be a better way of delivering the drugs. And there is a lot of, even Pfizer has now put up a separate company for herbal drugs and Food and Drug Administration United States has a separate section now for nutraceuticals and herbal drugs and they call it botanical products. I have a book I gave it here that botanical products covers lot of requirements you can please refer to the book it will be in library it is edited by me and then it is nowadays they are using this for all chronic diseases yesterday we have seen that like cancer liver disease uh, rheumatological disorders, asthma, allergy, many other acute and chronic diseases, they are there. So for COVID in India, they use these herbal drugs very widely. 
and they called it grandma's decoction and they used the turmeric and ginger and black pepper and honey and lemon in hot water and drink it and they found that the covid virus used to stay in your nose for 3 days and that's where it can kill and you don't have to take it so a good number of people will will take if they go out come home take steam and then breathe the steam hot steam and then they did not have covid so there were some very good simple free medicines but pfizer could not make it 55 billion dollars pfizer the virus a uh, vaccine was one of the largest product for pfizer they had the the product which was largest before was lipitor lipitor was 18 billion dollars one product there were several comp- uh, plants which were only punching lipitor for them but now covid vaccine became 55 million billion dollars three times the lipitor you can imagine and now people are saying that covid vaccine creates problem and a lot of things are there so we don't know but anyway so the world health organization has defined the herbal drugs as herbal medicine to herb, herbal medium material herbal preparation finished herbal product that contain as active ingredient part of the plant or other plant materials or combination now world health organization very well know that in the world more than 30% of the world population uses herbal drugs because they don't have access to the modern medicine in the rural areas in the remote areas you know like i was in liberia in liberia young children die because of diarrhea and the reason is the medicines are there in monro which is the capital like bogota but there are no roads to take the medicine to the remote villages no roads and once it rains then the main roads don't work because it is all mud roads and that's where the children even though they have medicines available they couldn't do it so what their option is to use the local herbal medicine and that is how happens in many many countries around the world so world health organization recognizes the herbal drugs as one of the treatment plan but not the western world western world still is not ready to accept it now there is a challenge with the herbal medicine first is regulatory standards there are no regulatory standards for herbal drug that is the problem second thing is scientific disadvantages the data shortages there is no data scientific data to prove all those things third is uh, un you need an identification on identification now just two days back i was in carferia correct carferia the big coffee market and there i went to all the coffee shops so they were saying that our cafe is from the north then south east south west so i asked them what is the difference they said the weather is different so the coffee tastes different from different part the coffee tastes different so the same thing is with herbal drugs if you grow the herbal drug in south colombia or north colombia or hilly mountainous colombia or plain colombia it will be different so it is the identification of herbal drug and characterization of herbal drug is a big challenge and that is where we'll talk about that tomorrow but this is the uh, challenge and last but not the least is herb drug interaction because on average you take medicine for diabetes blood pressure heart problem arthritis all different modern medicine and whether they will interact with your herbal drugs or not and if there is a combination side effects are there because of the interaction or not is not studied so this is these are the challenges which are but still the market is there the market is growing for these products so oh, no i am missing something yeah can i i have previous slide next one no no this one 
Okay? No, on the other side. Let me go with that. Okay. Yes. So now the pathway for high quality evidence is that you need to find out herbal medicines are playing a major role in the health of thousands of people worldwide, uh, millions of people worldwide. And in the last 20 years, the interest is growing in the Western world. And as you know, America consumes more than 35% of the resources of the world. You are aware of it. Same thing is happening now. That herbal drug, all because there is a big price, it goes to America. And people are destroying their herbal content and all those things and sending it to America. They are not replanting it. If you look at the Native Americans, the Native Americans, they say that you pluck one plant, you put ten plants. Because the next generation needs your plant. If you pluck all the plants, next generation will have no plants. So you seed ten plants and then take one plant out of the nature. That is what Native Americans say. But the Western world doesn't believe in that. And they take out all the ten plants. And this is where the challenge is going on. So it is estimated that 25% of the drug prescribed worldwide are derived from plants and 121 such active compounds are in use. And 252 drugs in WHO essential medicine list, 11% are plant origin. If you look at malaria, anti-malarial, the origin of all the anti-malarial comes out of quinine, which was a natural product. Cinco, cinco barbe, uh, something, yeah. So it comes out of quinine. Like that, most of the modern drugs, if you dig out more, you'll find that there is one herbal drug and on the base of, based on that herbal drug, they created the modern medicine and they call that as lead compound. Today, there is a major problem. All the pharmaceutical big industries, if you look at the number of new drugs approved by FDA, is going down because there are no new lead compounds. And that's why they are now looking for herbs to find out new lead compounds to treat different diseases. And this is where now they are trying to make sure that there is a high quality products for, of herbal drugs will be available and that is where World Health Organization is also trying to um, do the thing. And the European market has created some uh, system of building up new herbal drugs and they have different types of levels of ap approval for the drug. But Europe has developed much more than America as far as herbal drugs are concerned. They, are, they recognize homeopathy, they recognize Ayurveda, they recognize herbal drugs, they recognize nutraceutical as compared to the American counterpart. In America certain states like California or Washington state or Oregon state, they approved Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine, but not rest of the. So most of the Republican states did not approve it. A simple definition. Most of the Republican state, Trump state, don't approve this medicine. Most of the Democrat state, they approve it. That is how that definition has come up. But the European Union herbal medicine products are classified as regular medicinal products. And if they claim to uh, treat or prevent illnesses also. So in nutraceuticals, in Europe can claim, but in America they cannot claim. So if you are using something for treatment of a disease, uh, for diabetes, in a Europe market you can say that this herbal product can be used to treat diabetes. But in American market you cannot say that, you cannot claim therapeutic effect of the herbal drug. You have to say it is a complementary diet, dietary supplement, but not a medicine. This is the difference between the regulatory requirement. In United States about 19% of the adult population was reported using herbal medicine product in 2002. Now it has grown up to 30%. Most of the Americans, if you go to their homes, you will find nutraceuticals and herbal products in their home in different ways. And they are also, uh, but not accepting it till now. So never, herbal drugs are not regulated as a drug. They are not regulated, so there is no FDA regulation, but they are considered as dietary supplement. So if you go to the market, grocery store, you will find fortified cereals, correct cereals, cornflakes, and then fortified cornflakes. Fortified cornflakes contains vitamins and minerals and all those things. So they become dietary supplements or they become fortified uh, food. 
where you add uh, natural products into system and that's where efficacy and safety of some herbal used medicine is well documented there are a lot of researches which have been done for certain medicines and they are saying that no it works very well like turmeric has at least 10000 papers on turmeric which is very uh, well investigated lot of challenges are there for turmeric because absorption of turmeric if you give orally it doesn't absorb but you put it in oil and make it part of the curry it gets absorbed so the carrier for the drugs is very important and in ayurveda we say that anupana anupana means you have to take a particular drug with a particular solvent so some drug you have to take with butter or purified butter or we call it ghee some drugs you take with only honey some drugs you take with only milk so that is called anupana now we are realizing that this like uh, you have a stomach has a lot of acid so what you do you coat the aspirin with enteric coating they call it enteric coating enteric coating is nothing but anupana because you are coating it so that it will not break into stomach and create problem for you so this anupana what kind of, like there are certain medicine you need to take it only at night with hot water or with lemon water certain medicine you have to take it only before breakfast or after lunch because if you take it before lunch your body will react and then you will have problems you know many drugs have lot of side effect if you don't take it so most of the modern medicine they say take it after meals so your side effects are less and this is where the herbal things come to picture that they have less side effects and there are lot of randomized clinical trials that are being done but blind trials have not done and as i mentioned yesterday yesterday i was telling that we all eat rice we all eat sugar we all eat salt we all eat everything but we never think about whether there is a clinical study for rice or not we have one we eat, don't think about it same thing it with herbal drugs also they have been for, used for so there are conventional forms sometimes you take the herb directly or you can mix the herb with honey because the taste might be bad or you can put it into capsule or create tablets out of it or dissolve it some solvent and this is how different types of dosages are uh, created and uh, that is also used there so there are certain guidelines which have been formed by the asian uh, country when they met they said that indigenous herbal medicine so like if you go to north you will meet our nevada native americans or today i met a lady pueblo pueblo yeah they are native american correct i have a picture Oh, I met them. <laughs> so, and we had a lot of discussion because I was using my Spanish translation, and their thinking, at Hindu thinking, is very similar. They think about life very similar, and because it was pre-Christian tradition, so they think alike. And they, in India also, they carry the stick staff. in india also they carry it very interesting but anyway so indigenous people have been using herbal drugs for billion of years so that is one area which is proven that clinically it is proven that they work so they are defined as well known medicine in terms of their composition treatment dosage due to age old use in local communities and they have a different way of preparing them if you don't prepare according to what they prepare then you have troubles and that's where their uh, wisdom comes in knowledge comes in then there are herbal medicines in system these medicines are group of people which are used in long med time but by the uh, people who are not indigenous something like that then there is modified herbal medicines which are modified by in tablet or capsules and everything and finally there are imported products which come out of from different countries to your country and then that country where they are manufactured are responsible for their quality and this is how they qualified uh, classified four different area now there is a traditional approach which has been there all over the world whether it is african people 
or Native Americans or Maoris from New Zealand or Australian Aboriginal or Indians or Chinese. All of them had their own system of medicine. If you go to Africa, even today on the footpath, they will sell lot of African drugs. Lot of African drugs, they sell it on the footpath. And now people are going there, companies like Pfizer are going to find out what are those drugs and get the lead compounds out of that. And it is very common that all the world, every country had its own traditional system. But unfortunately, when the world became more and more westernized, we forgot our own system. And we thought that whatever comes from America is the best in the world. And that's what is, that is not true. Because it is not proven also. I have several reports I can show you that the drugs were approved by FDA and in three years they withdrew because of the side effects and people died. But it is still American, you know, that's how it happens. And, and all over the world it is there because of the marketing. The way they marketed, you think that, you know, in India also a lot of women, they want to use a lot of cosmetics to become fair. Because they want to be like Western, you know, look fair. In, uh, I don't know, is it same in Colombia? They use a lot of makeup to make, it is same common here also, okay. <laughs> so, huh? Yeah, but Colombians are on an average fair looking people. I don't see many people wearing cosmetics here. Maybe the here in the university of Ali, the ambient is not so common, but if you go to the office area, maybe you can find it. Okay. <laughs> so, it's like Michael Jackson. You know Michael Jackson. He became, he tried to become white and white and white. <laughs> anyway. So, the traditional approach all over the world, every country had its own indigenous system of medicine. So my request to you all is that try to find out, try to get that indigenous medicinal system, how is it working, how it is helping people for thousands of years. And every university in Colombia should set up a center for indigenous medicinal system studies. So that automatically people will start and you will have your own system, which will be 100 times cheaper then because on an average salary of, I don't know, what is the average salary of Colombian? Uh, average salary is like thousand dollars per month? One thousand dollars per month. The average salary no, 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 no. of... No, no, no. Still, still so high. <laughs> okay, no problem. Okay, no problem. But the average salary of Pfizer is in millions. And who is contributing to the Pfizer salary? You and me. <laughs> and our salary is 500, their salary is million. Why? Because we don't use our own medicines. If we start using our own medicines, 90% of our diseases are cured. So you save money. And that's where I think we should work on this area for every country. So now let me tell you about nano. So I have organized many conferences with a theme called Nano is too big. Actually Nano is too small, correct? But why it is too big? Because Nano applications are very big. This is Nano. All, whatever you are now, 90%, lot of things, your TV is Nano. Your digital things are Nano. Everything is Nano now. Your body is full of Nano. But why I say nano is too big? Because nowadays people are working on picogram, people are working on picometer, and there are researches, public papers are getting published into so they say nano is too big for us. Our is pico. You know, it is very interesting. The world when I was a student, I was student in 1971 to 1977. My research work was on micron capsulation. And at that time, microencapsulation was one of the big thing, correct? But now, micro is too big. Nobody even works on microencapsulation. They work on nanotechnology. Next, in 10 years, nobody will talk about nanotechnology. They will talk about pico technology. You got it? How that? No, it's going to happen. I have a friend in 
uh, RMIT in Melbourne, Australia. So I went to his lab and he was showing me the picometer measurements. But it is so expensive because to measure that you need pure gold. So one measurement cost you thousands of dollars. <laughs> Today it is like that. But it was, you know, I, when I was young, our whole village will have only one TV. The rich person. And all the village will go and watch the TV in their home. Now everybody has TV. Because in those days TV was very expensive. Now TV is very cheap. Fifteen years back, twenty years back, if you want to do nanotechnology research, it was very difficult. Now I can create nanoparticles right here. In this room, I can create nanoparticles because it has become cheaper. So the things are changing. So it is it's not very difficult to do that. So nanotechnology is a or nanoscience are widely seen as great potential to give bring benefits to many areas of research and applications. And everywhere, the paints, all industries, your aeroplane industry, everywhere they are using nanotechnology and they are finding lot of advantages of it. One simple example I will give you so that you will understand how the particles change. If you use pencil, correct? If the pencil has lead inside the pencil, correct? And then it breaks. When you use it, it breaks. When we were children, we used to use pencil and it will break. Then we will run it around and get sharpened. That lead, if you make it with nanoparticles, it becomes stronger than steel. It will never break. And that's how the quantum properties change. When you take bigger particles to the nanoparticles, their quantum properties change, their physico-chemical properties change. And that's why nano is considered as a, in Greek, it's a Greek word that is called dwarf, means small. And it is 10 raised to minus 9 meters, which is nanoparticle. And it was first used by Norio Taniguchi, that was the Japanese scientist. He used that in University of Tokyo, Japan. And since then, 1974, since then nanotechnology became but in 1988, when I worked in nano emulsion, we did not call our emulsions as nano emulsion because the reviewers would not have accepted for publication. <laughs> so we called it sub micronized emulsions and they accepted it. But if we would have called it nano emulsion, they would not have accepted it. Now, if you call sub micronized emulsion, they don't accept it. They want nano emulsion. <laughs> So in 20 years, the science terminology has changed. I still have, if you look at my paper, there are my name. I have several papers in the area of sub macronized emulsion. Because even though the particle size was 120 nanometer, the reviewer said, we don't know exactly what is nano emulsion. Mm -hmm. So we call it sub macronized emulsion. So that is how the things change. So this is a typical picture of the nano thing. You'll find this is your football, correct? And then this is your carbon nanotubes. So your hair follicle, your RBCs, and all your DNA structures, everything which is in your body, all are nanoparticles. And they, so I always ask one question to the students. Tell me who is the greatest scientist of nanotechnology? Can you guess? Don't tell my name because I do have <laughs> I have many books and I have many papers in nanotechnology, but not me. Who is the greatest scientist of nanotechnology? Imagine, tell the names. Or maybe the person who discovered uh, AD, uh, DNA? Okay, no. Go ahead. Any other guess? Can you guess something? You have to look at me. <laughs> Let me ask you one question now. Yeah. Have you seen snow? 
स्नो स्नो फॉलिंग डाउन आइसिकल दे आर नैनो पार्टिकल नाउ आई विल गिव यू अनादर एग्जाम्पल डू यू इट ऑरेंजेस इफ यू सी द ऑरेंजेस अंडर द स्कैनिंग इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोपी यू फाइंड पार्टिकल्स नैनो पार्टिकल्स इफ यू गो टू गोल्ड माइन्स द गोल्ड विच इज अवेलेबल इज नैनो पार्टिकल्स इफ यू सी द एक्सप्लोजन ऑफ लावा नैनो पार्टिकल्स इफ यू सी युअर हेयर नैनो पार्टिकल्स युअर बॉडी नैनो पार्टिकल्स Now, who the greatest scientist or creator of nano particles? It's Mother Nature. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. So, Mother Nature creates nano particles which we human being cannot create in the lab, even today, with all the technology. So, Mother Nature is much more knows nano technology how to make nano particle than even today all of us, because it makes it. You know your orange comes from many different countries, but all of them are nanoparticles. Milk comes from many different sources, nanoparticles. If you look at the milk under the scanning electron microscopy, you'll find fine oil globules, which are in the range of 200 to 500 nanometers. Who makes milk? They don't use gaulin. Homogenizers to get the milk <laughs> through the cow. Cow make the milk. Yes. Am I right? So we have to learn that nature is the greatest scientist or greatest creator of the nano particle. I always uh, share that. Yeah. Yeah. I want to ask somebody the chat is telling something. Do you want to hear or may I write? Yeah, please brief. tell me what she's saying. She said, but the uh, health and health risk for the For type nanoparticles, for example, MES, zinc, and silver. She said talk, talking about something like the mix of uh, nanoparticles in the health. Uh, in healthcare? Yeah. Yeah, it is growing. Mm -hmm. What we do now is, you know, we are learning from the nature. First thing, you will not believe, but if you read the history of medicine. herbal medicine human being learned from animals like if you see the dog the dog will eat a particular kind of grass to vomit yes and then people started observing oh if you eat that grass you vomit hmm. so if you have some problem with your gastrointestinal tract eat that grass and you vomit that's how they learned the herbal medicine So, lot of herbal medicines we have really learned from animals because they used to practice it. We we think that animals don't have brain, but it is not true. They have much better brain than us. <laughs> Only thing is we don't understand. <laughs> we try to find out from scientific way, and it is not possible to understand them. So the animals are there who guide. The same thing is so the herbal from this natural thing. we are now learning how to make nano particles like silica is widely used gelatin is widely used jello jello which we eat if you see the jello under the uh, scanning electron microscopy we will find nano particle so now people are using gelatin to prepare nano particle so that they can be used to deliver the drugs and that's how lot of new polymers are coming up which are used for i will talk that in my next talks also more details about it so these are some of the pictures of the and nano particles these are they, this is how they look in different uh, when you look at them under uh, transmission electron microscopy where the you know multiplied by you know many times to see and this is like a dendrimer so this is a very popular polymer now in a pharmacy because these all these ends they can attach different drugs to it they can attach different antibodies to it they can attach different types of ligands to it and then you can target that drug straight away to the suppose somebody is suffering from breast cancer then you have a antibody which will take this dendrimer to the breast cancer only so your rest of the body is not affected by the side effects of the drug and this is where the new thing will take 
more discuss more in my next talks about but this is how diverse colors and uh, diverse uh, shapes and sizes of nanoparticle you can see it in the system so nanoparticles are fabricated they can be made by two ways one is top down approach or bottom up approach top down approach is this what you do is there are channels and you go on doing minus finer finer channels and then you can accumulate all the data in those small channels now that is top bottom so you have a bigger particle size and you go smaller and smaller so that is normally most of the electronics is follows this method bottom to top is our chemical method what we do is we take the molecules which are much smaller than nanoparticle and mix these molecules together to make bigger molecule and finally we come down to nanoparticles so we take the polymers mix it the drug with it and then coat it and you get nanoparticle so this is a controlled environment where smaller particles are made bigger to reach the level of nano particles no sounds good in the top to bottom is bigger particles you cut it down 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 to smaller particles in bottom to uh, top is you take smaller particles and make up up till you come to a nano particle range and stop there this is how two different technologies are used and all these technologies are every day something new is happening very exciting field now that every day something new and newer technologies are used so you will find if you see the movies in 1980s the telephone used to be this big <laughs> correct <laughs> and <you> will, <laughs> then gradually they became this small this small and now they they are like very small even smaller now you get very thin and folding now and very thin look at our tvs now the tvs in good old days used to be like this big on the back side this big this big <coughs> now tv is becoming slim and slimmer now when a day is come they are saying that the apartment will be sold with tv screens yes. in the wall yeah. every room will have screens they are like thin screens polycarbonate or some that up the thing they are changing and that's where the nanotechnology is changing our lives and it is very applicable in every aspect of our life very well so these are two fabrication technologies common technology and then they are modified into different ways of doing it we'll see some of the things uh, when we talk about it now till 1980s when when I, even i when i did my research work in the early part of nano because i started working in micron encapsulation and some of our particle used to be nano particle but there were no technology to see those particles so but in last 30 years the laser diffraction came and you started measuring the nanoparticle size then the photon correlation spectroscopy came then wide range x ray all physics people these are all physics equipment they they developed all this majority of the development and differential scanning calorimetry proton nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy so all these tech electron spin resonance now you all will understand these thing because physics and all these equipment really developed for a different reason but then they were used for nanotechnology also and then people started learning more and more and more about nanotechnology and that's why the nano characterization became easier now when i was doing research in 1988 my sub magnetic emulsion we had only laser diffraction we did not have other thing we saw it under the scanning electron microscope but not more than that now you can identify the nanoparticle in the tissues inside and you can show that your particles can go into a particular cancer tissue and stay there and release the drug now technology has gone so much that you can really take your nanoparticle you attach a antibody go to a particular cancer tumor get into the cancer tumor and then release the drug and once that nanoparticle reaching that inside 
and you cut it and see it under the tr transmission electron microscopy that your nanoparticles have reached inside the cancer cells. This is very fascinating research work now. It is very interesting to do that. So these technologies are now growing. You are, I remember when I used my first scanning electron microscope, it was this big room. Now you get tabletop. You have tabletop scanning electron microscope. It's very easy to carry from one lab to another lab. No problem. In good old days, one lab, you cannot carry the lab. So that is another impact of nanotechnology. That whole thing, miniaturization, it is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. So it is very interesting to see that. So what are the challenges of herbal medicine? So if you look at the challenges of herbal medicine, first is very high dose. You know, normally the dose of the herbal medicines is much higher. Second thing is characterization and solubility problems and formulation challenges. It is very difficult to solubilize the herbal medicines, put it into the liquid, dissolve it, because it can dissolve in methylene chloride, but then you will treat one disease and you will get cancer later. So you don't want to use methylene chloride because it is a carcinogenic. So ultimately it comes down to, don't bring water, I am okay. Yeah, you. Okay. Okay. So, characterization and solubility problems and formulation challenges are very big because, you know, your tablet contains 50 milligram of drug and 100 milligram of tablet. But if your herbal drug dose is 10 grams, then you'll make a big tablet. It is difficult to give it. So, you have, there, there is a challenge of herbal medicine. Second thing is consistency. As I mentioned that in Colombia from north to south, you pick up herbs, they will have different ingredients, different concentration of ingredient, depending upon what type of soil you are using, depending upon what type of water you are getting, how much water you are providing, the consistency will differ, like coffee, same thing as coffee. And that's why then there is a problem of reproducibility, because in coffee also, if you, if the rains don't fall as much as normal required, the coffee test changes. And that's where reproducibility is difficult in herbal drug. Today it is good, tomorrow it may not be good. And that is another challenge. Second thing is clinical efficiency. Because today you may take 10 grams of coffee and you get a good effect. Tomorrow you may not get the same effect. Because other, your body is also changing. And that's where the clinical efficiency is a questionable thing sometimes. Manufacturing on large scale is very difficult as a source of medicine. You know in good old days, people used to use herbal medicine on a local level village people, they will use local medicine, they will not go. For manufacturing, you will have to take the whole country's herb to make manufacturing and that is where, oh my god, I forgot to bring water, my <laughs> apologies, I, you don't have to bring it actually. Don't worry. Oh my, sorry. <laughs> you know, I put my water bottle yeah, to yeah, fill it and in the last moment I forgot. <laughs> Muchas gracias, I appreciate that. Then comes your very interesting challenge is disagreement between the practitioner. Mm -hmm. So if you have a Pueblo Native American and an Nevada Native American, they will not have agreement about using the medicine. Same medicine they will use for different things. So the practitioners have disagreement. Second thing is many of the practitioners will not share with you mm -hmm. the knowledge because they think, no, you are not eligible to learn this. And there is a big problem for this because to learn that from the, like if you go to now Amazon jungle, there must be hundreds of new medicines, herbals, which never explored. But the Native American there will not tell you. Second thing is that you take them and try to analyze them and all those things. But how they are using, if you don't know, because they make some different ways of making it. And that's where the challenge comes into play. And finally, patient compliance is a major challenge. In last 50, 60 years, we are spoiled by the marketing and by the advertisement and the modern medicine. So what you think is that you take a tablet, within one hour, headache gone. You take a tablet, within one hour, pain gone. You take a tablet, within one hour, 
your relief is received. But this is all possible only for acute diseases. Mm. Headache, it can go with aspirin. But if you have arthritis pain, it doesn't go away. So for chronic diseases, you need something different, which is cheaper because you are using it for a long time, which is therapeutic, which is provides you, but over a period of longer time. And that is where the, I yesterday I was talking about chronic diseases, herbal medicines will provide a better health for longer time. And that's where the, but patient compliance is not there. If you don't get headache removed in one hour, you go second tablet. Correct? You go third tablet. You take paracetamol. Oh, I have a severe headache. Second tablet. Third tablet. Then doctor says, don't do that. You know, it will hurt your liver. But you do it. I have seen people taking five, six paracetamols every day. And I am saying you will die because of kidney and liver failure. Because it affects it very badly. But that is the mentality. The mindset is different. So when it comes to the herbal medicine, you need to have a different mindset because it is going to take time. It's like, you know, having a baby. You conceive it and you want the baby next day. That will not possible. It has to take nine months, correct? Same thing is like herbal medicine. You have to be patient to see the effect of herbal medicine for a period of time. And that is why patient compliance is challenging for herbal drug. But nanotechnology can help. And this is where reducing the dose level of the herbal medicine, it can reduce because nanotechnology surface area is enormous. The advantage of nanotechnology is surface area, enormous surface area. To give an example, if you have a cake which is as big as soccer field and you want to put icing on it, so you will need many kgs of sugar, correct? But if you convert the sugar into nanoparticle, in few grams you will have a sweet taste on that whole cake as big as soccer field because the particle surface area is very high it's a huge surface area so when you take little bit of nanoparticles in your body with the drug it provides a lot of surface area so you have a can i draw a picture one small thing it will be very easy to understand but it will be difficult for them who are online but uh, it takes you know, I am a professor, so I always <laughs> like to write something. <laughs> so it is, it's like, you know, you enter here and then the stomach is like big and then the stomach goes into intestine and then there is a colon and then it goes out. Now, the surface area this is the absorption surface area and it is limited. The people, every person will have stomach size. So absorption will only happen in this portion and then gradually the absorption is in the intestine. Now this portion, if you have bigger particles like this, the contact between absorption area and the bigger particle will be less. But in place of bigger particles, you have smaller particles, more surface area is covered. The smaller particles, they get through quickly. The bigger particles will take time. And that's where the nanoparticles will be very advantageous. So in bigger particles, you will need more drug. In smaller particles, you will need less drug. And that is the advantage of nanotechnology in healthcare. So you can use 10 milligram of drug in place of 1 gram using nanoparticles because the surface area is so big that the absorption is faster, absorption is quicker and every cell here on the epithelium it can absorb the drug and that is where the smaller the particle better the absorption and because nanotechnology provides a larger surface area, absorption is higher. And same thing happens with further down also. But this is, we have to understand why nanotechnology can really help us to understand the thing. So you can reduce the dose level here. 
and then providing better stability to the product. The product can be very stable in the nanoparticles. It is easy to formulate and characterize because now they are with all the technology and patient acceptability is higher. Patient is very comfortable, you know, cosmetics. If you have a nano cosmetic, you know, nowadays there are a lot of nano cosmetics, people like it. They buy it, they spend more money to buy this liposome cosmetics in France. France is a big thing for that. And it is, it will help in reproducibility of the therapeutic effectiveness. Now here, you have a selected drug, you incorporate in nanoparticles and reproducibility can be done. And reproducibility can be, I mean this consistency which is problem with herbal drug can be avoided using this technology and it's a very good technology and it is very easy to make it. It is not very tough to make it. So here are certain sample, I don't know, can you read that? It is tough to read also for me. Yeah, but St. John Watts, Jinko Biloba, uh, Ginger, Ginseng, Chamomile, Curcumin, Echinacea, all these are Kava, all these are herbal drugs which have been used by indigenous people all over the world. Many of those are used by indigenous people all over the world. And nowadays people are trying to increase the efficacy of these drugs, putting them into the nanotechnology. It is very interesting that they are finding good uses of this drug in different types of diseases. I have a uh, diseases uh, here, written here. So major depressive decisions are there. There are many different types of diseases. These herbal drugs can be used and people are using nanotechnology to deliver them. Here are some other uh, nano carriers and nanomaterials which are used to deliver the herbal drug like liposomes. It is very easy to make liposomes in the lab. Very easy. It doesn't take much time. You just need good solvent, a lipid and you can use your egg lipid also or you can use your soya lipids which are very cheap. Egg lipids, soya lipids are not very expensive. And then you just use the evaporate the solvents and you get liposomes. And it is a controlled evaporation, that is only condition. Controlled evaporation of the solvent will provide you liposome and you can incorporate your drugs into the liposome. So liposome is there, then polymeric missiles is another, uh, there are several polymers which you dissolve and they form missiles. Missiles is in between the molecule and the uh, nanoparticle, they are smaller size. And you incorporate the drug into the missiles and then you can separate them out using another solvent. Very simple technology there. Then dendrimers, I already, already talked to you, the dendrimers are polymers with several branches. And each of these branches, you know, it looks like uh, this, this will be a dendrimer polymer and they will have different branches. And this is a very versatile polymer molecule. So you can use your antibody, MAB, monoclonal antibody. Now monoclonal antibody, if you attach to the dendrimer, now monoclonal antibodies are organ specific. So they can go specific, suppose somebody is suffering from prostate cancer. So you can create an antibody which is specifically attacking, uh, reaching to prostate cancer. So you will take this whole molecule to the prostate cancer. And then you can have another ligands here. You can put anti-cancer drug here. You can put a herbal drug here, anti-inflammatory. So, in one polymer, you have a versatility and flexibility to attach so many things. And this is called targeted drug delivery. So, it targets to breast cancer or prostate cancer or any cancer you want to be pleased. Okay, teacher, and then the, the nanocarrier is associated with the target and with the drugs? Yeah. Or, or we can use different, the same nanocarrier with different drugs and with different targets, is possible? No, what you do is, you have targeted, happens because of monoclonal antibody. Okay. So it will be, you will have to use different monoclonal antibodies attached to the same dendrimer and the drug can go to different polymers. Ah, okay. Different uh, cancer. 
I mean, now they are doing more into the cancer. Oh, okay. But the same thing can be, uh, you suppose you have a problem with liver. Mm -hmm. Then you can identify certain monoclonal antibodies which will take it to the liver only. So it will not go to the rest. Now what happens is, you take an anti-cancer drug, they inject it. Yes. Once it goes in injection, it goes in the yes. whole body. Yes. And that's why you see the side effects. The hair is gone, weight is lost, and a lot of vomiting and all side effects are there. In this case, the anti-cancer drug, which here, mm -hmm. goes straight to the cancer tissues. Uh, directly? Yes, directly. Is, is yeah, and that's why this is very important. Yes. So you will find, if you see now the new drugs which are coming, most of them are monoclonal antibodies. And to protect the health and tissues yeah. because it's only... Only going problem. to that point. Yes. So it is very easy now that if you see the cancer treatments now are much different than 20 years back because of the nanotechnology. Okay. And they don't even operate now. You know, they have small hole. So they put a small hole, put a robo there, it's a nano robo. It goes into your kidney or ovary or wherever you want. And they can see it under the microscope. So they, they put a light there. And that light will tell you everything what is inside. And then they deduct it and they pull it out and that's all. <laughs> the technology has become so good. Yes. That's why people are living longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So please give Any me other questions? Yeah, maybe but I have a problem here, so please give me a second. Okay. But this treatment only in the first stage of cancer or the stage more advanced of cancer? The treatment of it is, you know, there are two things. We call it two types of uh, application for FDA. One is called investigational new drug, IND. And second is called new drug application, that is called NDA. And third is called abbreviated new drug application, ANDA. So to understand IND is that suppose you, are, you have developed a medicine for cancer, but you are not very sure whether it is working or not working. It's in clinical study. So what they do is they will go to the cancer hospitals. Suppose you are in the phase 4, you talk to the patient saying that we don't know this is an investigational drug. If you want to try and if you survive longer, you are benefited. Otherwise you are going to die. It is like COVID. COVID vaccine was an investigational drug. So suppose something goes wrong with you with Pfizer vaccine, you cannot sue the Pfizer because they gave you gave in writing that this is an investigational drug and I am not going to sue you. That's why it is happening, you know. So that is the uh, scenario there. So am I? Oh, okay. I see my batik there. So. <laughs> anyway, so we have dendrimer, they have polymeric nanoparticles are there. Now there are many good nanoparticle polymers. PLA, PLGA, polylactic acid, polylactic glycolic acid, polycaprolactone. These are all FDA approved polymers. They are not expensive. You can easily do nanoparticles in the lab, in our lab here, without any problems. So you need not be scared of nanotechnology. It is very easy to make it. It is very, it's not very expensive also to make it. But you need to plan properly. And there are hundreds of papers now to find out. And then there are solid lipid nanoparticles, which is like SLN. Uh, they are also very interesting area where cheaper and to make it and they are, uh, there are several chemicals or nanomaterials. I have put their names here. Glyceryl, uh, then steric triglyceride, cetyl palmitate. These are all some of the chemicals which are wi widely used in the Thing, phosphatidylcholine is used for lipodome and they are very cheap, they are not very expensive there and you can use it and make it. Now there are natural uh, products which are also very useful like gelatin. Gelatin, albumin, alginate, collagen, chitosan, chitosan, 
these are very much cheaper product and they give very good nanoparticles your nanoparticle size will be around 200 to 500 but you can get nanoparticles out of that and you can incorporate your herbal drugs also there then synthetic are polylactic acid as i mentioned polylactic glycolide polylactic caprolatone polyethylene media acrylate methacrylate and then there are metallic like iron oxide there are a lot of gold nanoparticles and many cancer uh, researches are going on on gold nanoparticles because gold nanoparticles also can attach this monoclonal antibody and it can target targeted drug delivery so there are a lot of clinical research is going on now if you have a cancer of fourth phase, fourth phase then you tell hey come on i am going to die in one month why not take the medicine and that's how they become ind they accept it that if something goes wrong i am responsible not the drug and they get it in writing because anyway they know that they are going to die so this is where the investigational drug in, uh, are treated once you have 100 patient data then fda allows you to put an nda new drug application and that's how the it comes into the mainstream but even today a person who is a family physician sitting in a corner shop has no access to these drugs you need to have very specialized uh, training to use these drugs for cancer especially almost 80 percent of the nanoparticle drugs are uh, for cancer treatment there are almost 300 plus drugs are available now as nanotechnology so i need to go a little faster now so these are some of the methods which are used for formulating the nanostructures so you have many different ways of using and they're very small but i'm going to share this with you and you can just enlarge it or cut and paste it and you can use then look at it uh, very well uh, formulating the nanostructure there all different types of methodologies are used there now chemical structures of herbal components so now curcumin curcumin contains this curcuminoids uh, the turmeric curcuminoids are there but if you extract them it doesn't work if you put them as curcumin it works and that is where the challenge comes into the herbal product that we don't know but curcumin, lycopene, uh, this is uh, temu, shinon and stilbenin, these are all the herbal products which are, uh, they are using it in the nanotechnology or nano drug delivery system. Uh, you have many different extracts, herbal extracts which have been converted into nanoparticles and they are exploring uh, how to utilize those nanoparticles. And yesterday I was talking about the um, Patent. So there are several patents, US patents, which have been given to combination of anti-cancer drug and the herbal drug. And there are several of them. There are a good number of them. I picked up some of them. But a large number of patents are now given for using herbal drugs and all things. So let me talk something about my research work, which we do. You know, all of you have seen e-cigarettes, correct? A lot of people use it. I watch them here. So e-cigarette, if you use tobacco, it is a bad effect on your health. But in place of tobacco, if you can use herbal drugs, it can be a good platform to deliver the drug. And that is why we wanted to create something which can be used in e-cigarette liquids so that the drug can be delivered. So we are uh, trying to use this e-cigarette as a platform for delivery of herbal drugs because tobacco tobacco is herbal drug and that's where we are doing so our first uh, this is one uh, very good uh, example about curcumin nano emulsion so we created curcumin nano emulsion you will find that our particle size of the nano emulsion was 259 nanometer and even after three months of stability study the particle size did not change much it came only 314 the electrical mobility was 253 to 273 so this was a very stable uh, nano emulsion we had created their ph value did not change much their viscosity did not change their zeta potential was very high higher the zeta potential better is the stability for the so this was our uh, nano emulsion we created using the lipid combinations combination of lipids and uh, different polymers and different uh, elect, uh, emulsifying agents and this was one thing we did this is a scanning electron microscope picture of the uh, nanoparticles you can see that there are some very big particles 
but there are some very fine particles here. They are like around 70, 80 nanometers. And that can be done in the lab. In your lab also you can easily do that here. So what yesterday I was talking about is that uh, the NLRP inflammasome, our body has got several proteins in the body. And they are, some are very good proteins, some are bad proteins. So they are known as in inflammasomes. So inflammasomes are the concentration of this protein, like NLRP3 is inflammasome. This concentration goes up in the body. Then you start showing cardiovascular diseases, gout, diabetic kidney disease, beta cell dysfunction, adipose tissue inflammation, hyperglycemia. All these are because of higher concentration of NLRP3. Now what we have shown is that when you use curcumin here and deliver curcumin as a nanoparticle emulsion, this concentration of NLRP3 came down. And you can see that if NLRP3 is going up, your cholesterol goes up, your oxid, uh, LDL goes up, uric acid goes up, and then you see these effects of these biomarkers. These are all biomarkers, cholesterol, oxy-LDL, uric acid, amyloid peptides, ATP, reactive oxygen, uh, species. These are all biomarkers. They all increase in the concentration. As soon as ROS, reactive oxygen species, increases, your inflammation increases. And you start getting, you know, if you have a cold, cough and cold, then you start sneezing out and you throw the cuff. You know, a sticky stuff comes out of your mouth and nose and all those things. That is nothing but the impact of ROS. Reactive oxygen species concentration goes up. So cells are killed. And those cells are coming out of your cuff. And this is where the curcumin helps in reducing the NLRP3 inflammasome mm -hmm. concentration. But again, you have to take it for a, a reasonably good time and that works out very well. So this is the uh, take, uh, mechanism which we, they work. And we have seen that curcumin mm -hmm. inhibits ROS mediated damage to neuronal cells. So what we did was we took the neuronal cells and injected our curcumin emulsion. First we treated that neuronal cells with hydrogen peroxide. So we created injury into the neuronal cells. And once that injury was created into the neuronal cells, then we treated with curcumin. And we showed that the injury which was created because of the hydrogen peroxide uh, oxidative injury was removed. And curcumin could help it to rebuild back the oxidative uh, injury of the system. So which had neither ROS nor curcumin and were served as vehicle without ROS and cellular morphology was observed after 24 hours. Uh, and uh, differential human SK and SH cells, these are uh, neuronal cells, were co-treated with 100 micrometer milliliters of ROS, which is hydrogen peroxide, reactive oxygen PC. Hydrogen peroxide has always oxygen, which is nas nascent oxygen, and it is reactive. Water doesn't have it. H2O2 has extra, extra oxygen molecule, which is always in a free radical level, and that is why it creates oxidative damage to the neuronal cell and then we treated it with 250 nanometer nanomolar and 500 nanomolar of curcumin for 24 hours mm -hmm. and morphology of only ROS treated cells showed gross reduction in cell number and apoptive cells and cellular morphology so cells were dying because of the hydrogen peroxide treatment but curcumin withdrew or prevented that uh, death of the cell so this is something which we found out with inflammasome activation that NLRP3 you know, that is how the inflammation uh, are, and there is another um, uh, um, biomarker which is known as IL-1 beta. That is another inflammation. So we showed that the concentration of IL-1 beta can be reduced with the curcumin. So you can see this normal, this is reduction in the IL beta after the curcumin uh, inject, uh, exposure. And this is how we have shown that curcumin really is effective in anti-inflammation or inflammation of the neuronal cells and that was very interesting study. and there are many uh, different studies in many different areas of cells where they have shown that curcumin works. Uh, so this is our IL-1 beta secretion. Uh, you will see that when you are treating the cells with the curcumin nanoemulsion, the IL-1 beta secretion was reduced significantly. 
So the inflammation concentration was reduced significantly. So curcumin works. That is what it is very clearly shown through our research work. So curcumin treatment augments the ROS mediated neuronal cell damage. Curcumin treatment mediates reduced IL-1 beta secretion. Curcumin treatment uh, inhibit the capsaic 1 cleavage and secretion and curcumin treatment inhibit the effects of NLRP3 inflammasome activate, activator nigricin and ATP. So these are some of the observations which we have done after our research work and we had published that also. Our another program was on physostigmine. Physostigmine is a natural uh, alkaloid uh, which is also known as iserin which comes out of the Calabar bean, which is a African tradition, traditional African medicine. It is widely used in Africa na naturally. And uh, it is parasympathomatic alkaloid and specifically reversible cholinesterase inhibitor. Now what we were saying that in Alzheimer's patients, this cholinesterase inhibitor's concentration goes up. And that's how you start showing the signs of Alzheimer's. So we thought that if we can put physostigmine as a in nano emulsion and if the particles can reach the brain then the concentration of anticholinesterase can go down and Alzheimer's can be reduced or less uh, impact can be seen and that was the hypothesis. In those days, in 1980s, I don't know you are too young, but in 1980s they used to say that if you eat in aluminum containers you will get Alzheimer's because aluminum can go into the food and then get into your brain. And that's where the anti stress concentration can go up. And that's why we try to incorporate physostigmine into the nanoemulsion. So this was our nanoemulsion particle size distribution. You will find that our it was a very uniform nanoemulsion. The particle size was ranging between 80 to maximum 250 nanometers with average of 120 nanometers. So it was a hardcore nice nano emulsion reproduction. I, I do it in my lab even now. Our nano emulsions are very uh, reproducible and you can incorporate the things. So we studied the uh, drug release of the nano emulsion so you can see the drug release over a period of time. Uh, it goes in 5 ml. Now you have to understand that we do this drug release in 900 ml of water but you will never get 900 ml in the body at one time. So obviously it can be extrapolated to many more hours as uh, things are there. Then this is another uh, drug release study which we did in the um, dissolution apparatuses. This is the degradation we studied at different temperatures and showed the stability of the nano emulsions and phytotigmine nano emulsion degradation we have shown. And then what we did was we studied the absorption of nano emulsion. So we put two cannulas. We, you know, anesthetize the uh, rat, then open the rat and from intestine, like here is the intestine, so we put a cannula here and the cannula here. So the nano emulsion was injected here and the nano emulsion will circulate all the way and then it come out here because we have cannulated, we put two cannula, two tubes were added here and here. Same thing we had done with the dogs also. So here, once we inject the nano emulsion here, we take out the liquid here. Now it is a circle going on and there is a pump here. Correct? So now nano emulsion goes through all the intestine. This is called in situ. And then we measure the concentration here and measure the concentration here. Sounds good? So we will find that how much drug is absorbed through the intestine. Make sense? And that's where we found out that this, over the period of time it was releasing the drug for a longer time. And that's one thing we see. Second thing we found out that the concentration of physostigmine increased in the brain cells. So when this was done, this is now an animal. So we removed the brain and found out that physostigmine cells were there. Now you will say that how the physostigmine goes to the brain. In those days, there was no research published 
that there are lymphatic systems in brain. So when we were saying that these nanoparticles behave like chylomicrons, like our bodies have chylomicrons, and chylomicron particle size is 500 milli nanometer. So the body, all the lipid system, like you eat the yogurt, it goes through chylomicron. They form the chylomicron. It is a lipid system in the body. And this nano emulsion were also lipid emulsion. So when they get absorbed here, they will behave like chylomicron, get taken up by the lymphatic system, and there is a connection between the stomach lymphatic system and the brain lymphatic system. But when we wrote this, there was no proof that lymphatic system is there. So our project, they rejected our paper. That was our hypothesis. Then we said, okay, we don't want to say that. And then we published it, but we didn't say that. By 2013 now, they have papers now published saying that there is a lymphatic system existing in brain. Now if I put that hypothesis, people will accept it. You know, but in 1988 they rejected. But now if I say the same thing, they will accept it. That nanoparticles will behave like chylomicron, can get into the limb system and can get into the brain. We showed that it goes into the brain. It didn't work that way. So that is how the challenge is. But over the product, as the science develops, things change. My third uh, experiment with the herbal drug was triptolite. Triptolite is a Chinese medicine. It is uh, chemically defined as potent immunosuppressive compound isolated from anti-inflammatory Chinese herbal medicine. It is like a curcumin of Chinese medicine. It is anti-inflammatory in nature. It is an immunosuppressive uh, compound isolated from that. And we were trying to create triptolite nanoemulsion to treat chlorine inflammation. You know, in America, a lot of people have swimming pools at home. So they pour the chlorine first to maintain the swimming pool. But once you pour the chlorine, then you should not swim for 24 hours because you will get chlorine toxicity. But if the mother put the chlorine and doesn't tell the child, child comes from the school and jumps in the pool and shows chlorine toxicity. And that is where this inflammation, chlorine toxicity of um, lungs. To treat that, we tried to get the, we have a nice paper on this, triptolite nanoemulsion to treat chlorine toxicity of lungs. So this was a Chinese herb which was, uh, you know, Tripterygium uh, Wilfordi, that is the name of that herb. And it was Chinese, uh, in Chinese they call it Lei Gong Teng and we extracted the triptolite is readily available there and it is widely used in Chinese medicine so we wanted to try and use it in the nano emulsion so we tried to uh, convert this uh, triptolite into nano emulsion like phycotigmine we added into the same typical lipid emulsion and then try to see the dose response to understand the pa parameters uh, biomarkers for the chlorine toxicity and TPT and TPT uh, nano emulsions were used and now the biomarker which we tried to use was NFKB activation in the uh, chlorine toxicity and that's how we saw that there was a reduction of the uh, impact of NFKB in the system. Uh, so triptolide was very useful in treating that. Uh, so this was time course of inhibition of NFKB with triptolide concentration in the nanotechnology you will find nano emulsions reduce the NFKB concentration, that means it is improving the lung cells. Reduction of NFKB reflects the improvement of the lung cells because of the uh, toxicity. The whatever toxicity which has happened to the lung cells is reduced with triptolide uh, emulsion. And then testing triptolide in uh, any in vivo, we showed that this uh, triptolide was reduction of this uh, KC, neutrophil uh, another biomarker which is used. So this is normal and this is triptolide uh, treated um, animals. That's how that was done. So uh, triptolide was another neutrophil chemoattractant in a lung leverage fluid we showed and this is reduction is seen in the treatment with the treatment of uh, triptolide nanoemulsion. So nanotechnology enhanced curcumin symbiosis of ancient wisdom and the East and West. So Eastern people or the indigenous people or the world people have developed many good herbal medicine, but there has to be a synergy between the modern medicine and the herbal medicine. Use the nanotechnology so that we will, it may lead to great potential for the 
future development of the uh, medicine so why nano emulsion is nano emulsion formulations are very easy to manufacture you can manufacture it in the lab and you can distribute hydrophobic material in the oil and that is the advantage of nano emulsion there and we have seen that nano emulsions are very stable they can be stable for 2 years so it can be used it can get fda approval lot of nano emulsion products are in the market and that's why we can use fda approval will be easier to get nano emulsion for herbal drugs and that's why it is a great idea to use nano emulsion and future potentially nanotechnology principles can significantly contribute towards the developing of herbal medicines especially can address several challenges posed by the herbal medicine it can help to improve the efficacy of the products and it will increase acceptability of by the patient as well as increase the prestigious prestige of the herb, herbal medicine today herbal medicine doesn't have as much prestige but that can be increased with nano technology application so these are some of my books in the nanotechnology nano sciences a books in drug delivery systems and books in nutraceuticals and muchas gracias muchas gracias so i took three minutes more but i hope you liked it was it informative yeah 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 very lot of our research are they are all published you can they are in good journals actually Uh, and people are nowadays accepting if you do herbal drug research people accept mainstream journals are also accepting now they think that there is a potential yeah thank you so much uh, you any question any questions comments feelings eh si alguien tiene alguna pregunta en la ya audio de la videollamada puede abrir el micrófono y la cámara están habilitados I have a question for them ah do you think that your time is wasted listening to me for one and a half hours or it was useful or you want me to translate in spanish please answer the question let me ask in spanish then could you please repeat the question Wait a minute. Do you think you Okay. Cres que perdiste el tiempo escuchan chando escuchando me. Escuchando me. Now you can understand. Yes, but no absolutely no. Absolutely no. Oh. <laughs> I appreciate to be. Oh, gracias, gracias, muchas gracias. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> Good. No questions. Oh yeah. If one of the biggest challenge in the herbal world is the purification of metabol secondary metabolite, that is uh, increase the high levels of dose. Uh, What is the tool to uh, the herbal drugs are more effective uh, in the body because the purification technique, uh, the secondary metabolites, is hard flavonoids, terpenes. So I'll ask you one very simple question. Said hundred years back. people were using herbal drug correct they did not do any purification oh, okay. they did not do any extraction still it was working correct so yesterday i was talking to you about this thing solo versus concert performance you remember yesterday we talked about that that herbal drug is a concert performance so if you try to do you may lose the ingredient in doing that so we need to think about that first thing second thing i told you yesterday don't apply the rules of modern medicine to the herbal medicine because as soon as you try to extract out and people have done for curcumin so many experiments and they found out that you take out the curcuminoid unless it is a combination of 6 7 curcuminoids it doesn't work so when we work with herbal drugs we need to adopt a different approach not a western medicine approach to it we try to 
maintain the integrity of the herbal drug if the integrity is not maintained then we will lose it there is a possibility that you may extract a good ingredient and use it that is possible but whether that in, like i i work i used to work in industry so we had a product so we developed the product very nicely with different concentration this that then we found out that the metabolite of that product was 500 times more active than the actual drug so the company threw that product because they didn't want to take that risk so same thing happens with herbal drugs also that herbal drug de dealing with herbal drug one challenge is whether we should adopt the modern medicine way to extract and find out the active ingredient and do it or to use herbal drug as it is one challenge second challenge is that to identify the togetherness means unique uniqueness of that herb is based on how all the ingredients come together and work it is like making a curry you know when you have a curry curry will taste good if all the ingredients are within the system within the concentration if the ingredient suppose salt is very high you will not like the curry if the salt is very low you will not like the curry so to create a good curry you need to have a combination of all spices together to make a good curry herbal drug is like curry so you have to if you try to extract out you may not be able to do successfully because dexa company i had given talk there and i was talking to their scientist and they did this experiment with almost 80 different herbs and they found out that in many herbs the extraction did not work the extracts were not effective the drug is effective extracts were not I mean they tried on in animals and they found out that the drug if intact herbal drug give it it works you extract it doesn't work so there is something much more to study than simply taking a polar or non polar because it is a very um, i'll tell you a very simple thing what happens is in i am in the science for last 50 years so in 1960 70s everybody used to think that everything should be linear people were trying to find out linearity in all the systems after 80s people have realized that nothing is linear so now people are going in a direction of understanding the complexity of the system because no system is linear even human being is not linear a person today suppose you are talking to me correct you have a good respect for me because i am teaching you yeah. hypothetical i don't think that <laughs> <laughs> but suppose i go on the road and i i show you some piece of paper. oh i want to see can you help me and in you are not in good mood you will say go go away i don't want to tell you complexity because human being is complex the behavior of human being is very complex and i give a very nice example to understand that if there is a little baby walking around with the mom and you give the chocolate the baby picks up the chocolate but now the baby is alone he doesn't see the mom around you give the chocolate baby cries doesn't touch the chocolate wait for the mommy to come around then pick up the chocolate the same baby same chocolate but mother is not around doesn't touch chocolate because crying 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 i want my mommy as soon as they say the mommy i want my chocolate this is complexity complexity is a very interesting thing so the world of science is now understanding like in my case when i was in doing my research in pharmacokinetics we used to try to have a straight line relationship between the absorption and the release but it is not true so we put another model like that in due course of time they put 10 different models to fit their data into some sort of linearity in pharmacokinetics it didn't work so now they have accepted that there is a complexity because the body behaves differently you take the medicine in the morning before meals and after meals kinetics is different 
so now the world is moving towards understanding the complexity of the systems and the more you will understand the complexity of the system more herbal drugs will be able to understand because it is complex you try to make more simple one medicine one drug one ingredient that is a linearity sim approach multiple drugs multiple system different ways that is a complex city approach so for herbal medicines a time will come like when in 1960 nobody would have understood nanotechnology because there were no equipment by 2050 you will have equipment to understand the complexity science is moving in that direction so to understand complexity and nature is a complex phenomenon nature is never linear phenomena it is like your columbia weather you know <laughs> everybody carry the umbrella they don't know it is sunny in 15 minutes it rains am i right it's complex the weather channel also doesn't predict correctly many times it's a problem so it is like a complex look at this now i just said and it started raining to understand the complexity of the system so never make it simple the more you make it simple you are cheating yourself because it is a complex thing even life is complex economics is complex you want to make it simple it doesn't work that's why people lose money when they understand oh it's simple 25% return put the money <laughs> next day it is 2.5% that that's all. so herbal drugs people are working on it and there will be some ways to find it out but nanotechnology will be a good way to reach and follow it yeah okay any other question or can we leave the professor patak to 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 relax remote <laughs> go to his abode yeah yeah <laughs> relax in his abode <laughs> okay any question in last question in the en de video de la videollamada alguien quiere preguntar no okay so let's take this again the professor patak thank you very much gracias gracias see you tomorrow yeah see you tomorrow see you tomorrow muchísimas gracias a todos por la asistencia yeah tomorrow we'll talk about standardization and quality control mañana sí mañana tenemos herbal medicine acá eh, mismo aquí mismo Sí, entonces yo creo que nos vemos acá mismo. Eh, ¿Se siente más cómodo hoy acá? Sí. Que tengo, pero mañana tengo un auditorio, pero muy grande, entonces. Eh...